Live mode is a really powerful feature that allows you to switch or layer parts instantly without the sound cutting off. When using live mode, all parts respond to a single MIDI channel. Although live mode is extremely useful on stage, its features can also be useful when composing. Live mode works with complete patches, so it takes a powerful computer to make the most of it. That's why it's important to mute patch effects and share effects on Oxracks to optimize performance when creating live mode multis. Since live mode involves the use of multiple parts, it can be found under multi and then live. I'll go ahead and turn on live mode. And when live mode is enabled, you'll get this display in the header, which can be seen from any page in the plugin. In the live mode page, the names of the patches are shown really big, which is extremely useful for live situations. The main concept behind live mode is to be able to play a patch and then switch to a different one without having the sound of the previous patch cut off. The way to switch parts plays a key role when using live mode, and that's why we've provided different ways to do it. As you already saw, the parts can be selected by using the mouse, or using the previous next arrows, which can be MIDI learned. Let's try that. I'll right click on this arrow and select MIDI CC learn. I'll press this switch on my controller. Done. Now I'll repeat the process with this arrow, MIDI CC learn, and this time I'll use this switch on my controller. That's it. Now I can step through parts without using the mouse. The order of the parts can be rearranged, which is very useful when using these arrows to select them. It's only a matter of dragging them and dropping them to the desired location. That's it. Let's try it again. Cool. Now I can use the switches in my controller to go through the parts in the order I want to. Parts can also be selected using key switches, which is called the key select mode, MIDI CCs, or program changes. Let's start with key select mode. From this menu, I can select what's displayed in this area. Right now, it's showing the part number, so I'll set it to key select. No key switches are assigned yet, so let's go ahead and assign them. I want part one to be selected whenever I play note C1 on my MIDI controller. So I'll right click on it, select MIDI note learn, and play C1. Done. Now I'll do the same for part two with C-sharp one. Done. Easy, right? Now the same for part three, using D1. And now part four, using D-sharp one. Now that I have the key switches set up, I can switch through parts really fast without the need of a mouse. Not only that, but I can also layer them on the fly. How the parts are selected can be handled in different ways. I'm going to click on this magnifying glass display to go to the Live Mode Settings page. Here you'll find several controls. These switches enable the use of MIDI CCs, program changes, and keys to select the parts. From this menu, you can select the MIDI channel that Live Mode responds to. And from these menus, you can change how the selection is handled. In the Key Select Mode menu, I'm going to select Latch. In this mode, the key switches will act as on-off switches. Now I'll set it to touch mode. When using touch mode, the part selection responds to whatever was played last. For example, let's say I want to layer parts two, three, and four. I just need to play these three keys, and that's it. Now let's say I want to layer parts one and four. Done. Now two and three, and now only one. That's it. It's really simple and extremely fast. When working in switch mode, Key switches work as momentary switches. Parts will be enabled only for as long as I hold the keys. The same modes are available when using MIDI CCs. And mouse select mode only provides latch and touch modes. I'm going to set this back to touch mode. And this menu controls the key select display format, whether MIDI Note 60 is considered C3 or C4. Now let's use CCs to select parts. 
I'm going to set this menu to display MIDI CCs, and now let's assign them. I'll right click on part one, select MIDI CC Learn, and press this pad in my MIDI controller. Done. Now I'll right click on part two, select MIDI CC Learn, and press this pad. I'll do the same for part three, and now part four. Done, that's it. Now I can do the same thing I was doing with the key switches, but using these pads. Now let's try learning program changes. I'm going to right click on this part and select MIDI program change learn. And I'm going to dial 11 here, which in this keyboard is program change one. And there it is. But wouldn't it be great if live mode displayed this number as it shows up in my keyboard? Well, we included a menu in the settings page that allows you to customize the way program changes are displayed so that it matches your keyboard. The options are 11 to 88, 0 to 127, or 1 to 128. The keyboard I'm using uses 11 to 88, so I'll select that. I'm going to close settings, and there it is. Now I'll right click on the second part, select MIDI program change learn, and press number 2 here. Done. Now the third part, number 3, and the fourth part, number 4. That's it. Keep in mind that all the options to select parts, the mouse, these arrows, key select, CCs, and program changes, are not exclusive. You can use any of these anytime. From this page, you can also have access to basic mixer controls by clicking here. The level, mute, and solo buttons for each part will show up, so you don't have to navigate to the mixer page to adjust these, which of course are MIDI learnable. You even have access to the patch browser by clicking here, so you can change patches without leaving the live mode page. On this corner, whatever is selected in this menu will be displayed. Clicking here enables dual live mode, which allows you to use live mode from two different keyboards independently. The first one controlling parts 1 through 4, and the second one controlling parts 5 through 8. Let's check it out. I've loaded this multi, in which I set up this keyboard to send data to MIDI channel 1, and this keyboard to send data to MIDI channel 2. I'm going to be playing these four parts from this keyboard, and I'll select them using these four keys. From this keyboard, I'll be playing parts 5, 6, and 7, and I'll select them using these three keys. All right, let's play something. Isn't it cool how that works? And we're doing all of that in real time with no sequencer at all. Of course, if you'd like to try different parts in different keyboards, all you need to do is drag them and drop them. And that's it. When using live mode with a single keyboard, all the parts respond to a single MIDI channel. That means that a live mode performance could be recorded in a single MIDI track in the host, including all the switching, program change, and CC information. That can save a lot of time, and it's very useful for composing. Live mode is really flexible, and it's a much more interactive way to work with the wonderful sounds that Omnisphere can produce. 
After all, why limit yourself to only playing one sound at a time? Enjoy.